Hi, it's Des here. I'm in Pittsburgh in America. I'm at SHARE 2019. I have the pleasure of being joined by Carla Flores. Now, Carla is a mainframe security specialist. Carla, thanks so much for making time to catch up with me on camera. Absolutely. It's great to see you. So, great to be here. Yeah, we're going to have a great conversation for a few minutes around a couple of key topics that we were talking about earlier off camera, particularly your involvement with the event here at SHARE. Uh, uh, I understand you've had about 14 years of being involved in this organization, which probably ages both of us a bit. <laughs> Um, and, and particularly I want to get some insights from you with regard to what the event is and its focus around the user community and that it's user focused as opposed to uh, vendor focused and being vendor neutral. Um, I'd also like to talk about the natural evolution that we're seeing around the development of security solutions, particularly the role that Mainframe plays with that, and in particular um, the issue of where data lives and, and um, why that is an important uh, aspect. Then you're working on an amazing uh, campaign around women in IT, and particularly a committee on that. I'd like to know a bit more about that. And um, I understand that you're doing a lot of work in elementary schools in this space. And then I'd like to sort of get some insight on how people should engage with you and your team and the organization. So let's just quickly start about uh, your involvement with SHARE. So uh, for folk who don't know what the event is, maybe just give us a quick summary of what SHARE is and, and your journey through SHARE so far in the last 14 years. So SHARE is one of the largest uh, independent um, user conferences. It's not a vendor conference, so it's not like an IBM conference or a Broadcom conference. Right. Right. It's user based. While vendors come and present updates to their solutions, it's really about the technology on the mainframe right. Right, and how to best use that technology. The user aspect of it is great because we have customers that come right and present um, how they're using certain solutions, how they're being successful in their organizations with the implementation of those solutions. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I love the fact that it's vendor neutral because I think we see a lot of big vendor funded events that are exciting to go to and we learn a lot, but they tend to be big sales pitches. Exactly. What I've seen from, from the opening <laughs> keynote, which was cool, through to your uh, uh, talk today, is that this whole birds of the feather uh, networking piece and I guess building on what each other's doing, uh, vendors are sponsoring and supporting the event, but they don't really get to control the conversation. And that must be a big shift in how the event itself is perceived by the community because I see a lot of people here who are potentially working for competitors, but are actually quite close friends. Yeah, and in a lot of cases we present together, right? right. On a topic of solutions, so like for security, maybe event management, right? right? Right, We have maybe two or three vendors presenting on the topic, not necessarily selling a solution. We have the technical exchange, right? The mm, expo, yeah, yeah. which is where we can sell our solutions, right? right? But in the general technical program is where we actually present the technical aspect of the conference. Well, it's a credit to the event and the organizers and yourselves who volunteer for it because I think this is a key differentiator. Now, um, we had a conversation earlier about this whole natural evolution of implementing security solutions and, and where the mainframe plays a role in that. Um, what can you tell us about what the evolution of that has been? Uh, what's the transition from, I guess, in the last 10 or so years um, where people have been rushing to the cloud, they've been impacted by digital transformation, they've become a little bit lost about it and, and, and we've sort of come back to what we might have already known for a while and that is that the mainframe was a good place to put data and implementing security solutions was something we kind of knew about but we were relearning. Tell us about what that journey's been like and, and what's what's new and exciting in Broadcom's world in this space. So one of the interesting challenges is really educating the, the CISOs right. and the CIOs of today's organizations. A lot of them are younger, they think distributed and cloud is right. the way to go, and that the mainframe is a dinosaur, right, archaic. And honestly, the applications may not live on the mainframe anymore, yep. the customer facing applications are on a distributed platform out in the cloud or whatever, um, but the data still lives on the mainframe, so the data is even more important today on the mainframe and securing that data is even more important Indeed. because there's so many data breaches, right, that happen yeah. every day. So really being able to secure that data and making the awareness in a lot of these organizations that the data is still living on the mainframe is yep. the key, right? So don't ignore it. Well, we see it every day. I mean, uh, <laughs> I think I lost count the other day, but someone told me there was a statistic of about 1,400 incidents a day oh, yeah. of various forms and sometimes two or three major ones. And I guess the reality is it's not just about avoiding the commercial risk of that, but it's also the, the human toll that comes with breaching people's data and now collections of those. And underpinning all that, the, the, the I guess, national and federal uh, compliance and regulatory requirements, but now global, I guess, in that you know, GDPR is around and people used to think GDPR was purely the EU, but it impacts the whole world. I mean, Australia's had since uh, 1918 a privacy act that's protected individuals from that sort of thing. The US has had the EU-US uh, EU, data shield and then the Swiss had their own version. So 
found out it's not just about protecting your brand and your organization and the commercial challenge, but it's actually law. Yes. And I think this is a big shift we've seen as well. And the mainframe's been in the space for a long time. I mean, uh, I guess there's been modernization in this. Um, what are some of the big things that people come to you asking about where the mainframe can play a role in this? I mean, really, people are coming to us saying, how do I prevent myself from being on the front page right. of the paper, right? So, or they've had an internal audit, and maybe they've not come out as well as they would have liked on that internal audit. So they come to us and ask us to help them, right, figure out a way to keep themselves in check, right? So it's really a natural evolution of looking at, from sort of the back to basics, yep. right? Looking at it from the ground up, getting rid of old things that, that aren't accessed out there anymore, um, putting event monitoring in place, mm -hmm. right? Understanding what data you have on the mainframe and how you can classify it. Right. And then more importantly, locking down privileged users. Right, and this is built into the DNA of what uh, originally was CA, but now Broadcom Mainframe Division does uh, every day and night naturally. So it just makes sense to, to be having a conversation with yourself and your team about where that is, because you know where all the skeletons are buried, you yep. know where all the pitfalls are. And it can be an expensive exercise going through the learning it from scratch, and, and this is not something you can get. Because as you said, not only does no one want to be on the front page of the newspaper, but then also the cleanup that comes with that is yeah. just mind-bogglingly painful and expensive, right? Absolutely. Now, underpinning all of this, um, there's some exciting things you're doing, and you mentioned that you're um, part of a, a committee, I think you mentioned it was, in Women in IT. Correct. And you mentioned that you're doing some stuff way back to elementary schools, and junior schools, as you call them here, and, and even down to kindergartens with kids in coding. We'd love to get your insight on that, because I know there's a lot of exciting uh, campaigns being run at the adult level, but I think what you've really managed to do here is get into the hearts and minds and souls of the younger generation that have been coming through and learning about technology and implementing it and working for the likes of Broadcom. Tell us what the program actually is and, and what was the evolution of it? Yeah, so we started it with the Hour of Code. Right. Um, so it's a, right, a free program that you know is out there and available to everybody. We started by taking that into some um, underprivileged schools okay. in the Pittsburgh area and using it as a reward system for fifth graders. And the fifth graders came in kind of reluctant to, to coding, and by the time they left the class, they were all excited about it and, and wanted to, to kind of pursue a little bit more right. interest in coding. So we actually started to go lower in the grades, and now we've got it, gotten to the point where we're actually doing it from kindergarten up wow. in a couple of the local elementary schools. And I think one of the most rewarding things is is the kids that come in and all of a sudden realize they have an aptitude for logic, right? They have an right. aptitude for coding because there is a deficit, right, for technology. Indeed, there right? is. Careers. So I think getting kids hooked early. I got hooked in ninth grade wow. on coding. And, and look at your amazing career. So, and you know, I, that was kind of young back then, but um, getting them hooked as early as you possibly can so they can start thinking about that, I think is key. And you, I mean, I know the organization has a range of these programs, but there's an ASC program, which I'd Correct. love to get your insights into as well, that you've been running. And you've got a group of them here. I actually met one uh, last night at the opening dinner, uh, which was excitingly hosted at the Andy Warhol Museum. Yes. I did tend to get lost, but I was standing next to this massive elephant uh, colored black and white. And I met this young gentleman and he introduced himself and said he was an ASC. And I was like, great. Uh, and he was just clean cut, professional, stand up looking fellow. I thought, if this is the next generation of what's going to be running our banking and airline systems, then we're in a good place. Yeah. Tell us about that program. What is the ASC program about, and, and what's happening here this week with the uh, share event with your ACs? So that's our Associate Software Engineer program. We hire them in. They get um, hired into a particular development group, and then they come to Pittsburgh for seven weeks, and it's basically okay. mainframe boot camp. Wow. So they learn everything mainframe, all aspects of the mainframe. And then when they go back to their home office, where they're assigned for whatever product or solution they're supporting, then they get more ingrained with that particular solution. So we're laying Fantastic. the foundation um, for them with this program. They come to share, to, to mingle. Mm -hmm. um, their graduation is actually this Friday. Oh, wow. So timing is great that they're able to come here for a couple of days and they're going to graduate sense. on Friday. I saw that on the agenda. Yeah. I didn't quite understand what it yeah. was. Well, that'd be exciting for them. Yeah. Um, well, I, I haven't actually seen anything like this around the world, so I think this is a groundbreaking thing, but I know that you've been doing it for quite some time, because one of your associates and one of your earlier uh, participants were on my podcast recently, and I was astounded this has been running for so long I hadn't even heard of it. 
Um, so I can imagine this is going to be you now a global phenomenon that you're, you're driving up. And actually, the current president of SHARE was one of our ASCs. Wow. Yep. There he you was go. a graduate. So he was in the office this week talking to them about his career since he, you know, graduated out of the ASC program and, and moved on. But that's okay, right? Because yeah, we yeah. are, we're, we're fueling the ecosystem, right, at Indeed. this point. So. Well, there can be no better proof point than that, can there? Yeah. Now, um, one last question if I can. Uh, I know there's a lot of ways to engage with both yourself professionally and your team and your organization across Broadcom. Um, for folk who are not here, we would love to be engaging on LinkedIn and Twitter and other social media platforms and the, and the, the hash share PGH, which is short for Pittsburgh, uh, hash share PGH hashtag on Twitter and, and other platforms. Um, what's your advice on how to create a conversation with you? Because one of the things I'm seeing around the world now is people are realizing that they are better off reaching out to yourself and your organization across Broadcom and, and the mainframe division to be part of the conversation within their organizations as early as possible so they avoid all the obvious pitfalls that you know about but they may have to learn in, in the costly way. What are some of the ways that, that you would like people to reach out to the organization and just get in touch? And, I mean, obviously, it's engage on LinkedIn and Twitter and uh, the website. What are the normal journeys into the front door of Broadcom? So, I mean, obviously, you know, having, doing a Google search will find us, right? Indeed. And um, just do Broadcom now, not CA anymore. <laughs> but, uh, but we have something called communities. Yep. So all of the product solutions have a community. So really engaging through the com communities is a great way mm -hmm. to pose a question. And then that fosters some conversation amongst peers, right? Or okay. amongst us. Right? So if it's something that's going unanswered, maybe support will jump in. Maybe I'll see something and say, hey, let me come yep. on site and help you with that. So that's a, a really great way through the communities to get engaged. Um, and then certainly reaching out you know, to, to your customer success manager Fantastic. Um, with any solution needs that you have. Happy to help. Wonderful. Well, Carla, it's been great to see you. Thank you so much for making time to jump on camera with me and some great insights and congratulations on the Women in IT project from uh, uh, I guess, you know, junior, junior ages yeah. in kindergarten all the way up to what you're doing with the SE program. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think uh, if anything, the future is really bright with what yourself and your team are doing. And, and congratulations on an amazing event here with Share 2019 in Pittsburgh. And uh, can't wait to see what the next six to 12 months holds. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Thank Fantastic. you. Well, thank you.